Welcome to Work From Your Happy Place, the podcast that equips you with the tools, know-how, and motivation to live your dreams and find your happy place. Be sure to sign up for our free weekly newsletter for a recap of the week's guests and a preview of what's in store. To sign up, simply text the word happy place with no space to 33444. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce the host of Work From Your Happy Place, Belinda Ellsworth. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Work From Your Happy Place. This is Belinda Ellsworth here, and we have a great show in store for you today. I have the pleasure of having Marcella Kivik with me today. Marcella has been in the direct selling industry for 23 years and is currently working with Miriam International. She started as a stay-at-home mom who was looking for a way to stay home with her kids while earning a little bit of extra money. She grew it alongside her family, and now her kids don't need her time, but they are in college, so still need her money. Direct Sales has given her both the time and money to grow her family. She lives in Northern California with her husband and their 16-year-old son. Her oldest son just graduated from dental dental hygiene school and is working full-time, and her middle son attends US UCSD and is working on a degree in computer engineering. So very busy. Welcome, Marcella. Thank you, Belinda. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Because I'm excited about direct sales and sharing what we have to offer. I know. It's a really exciting time in the industry. It's just booming right now. So why don't you take a moment and just um, familiarize us with a little bit more about Marcella and everything about your journey. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, I began my journey in direct sales 23 years ago. I was a stay-at-home mom, and I had a big dream. If I could just make $1,000 a month alongside being a mom, that would be a miracle. Um, I held a home party. I held a pampered chef party and the lady came to my home and I just watched her. She was having a blast. The people were having a blast. So as she was packing up, I asked her, how much money did you make tonight? When she told me $200 and remember that was 23 years ago, I was like, I'm in. I want to do this. I know to, I know she's only been at my house for three hours. I totally need to do this. Um, so I was excited. Um, the buy-in was low. I found that I could do this around my kids and I could earn money. Um, I saw she was having a blast. Um, and again, my goal was to make $1,000 a month. My first entire year, I failed. I earned $7,000 for the entire year. But I stayed focused on not what I wasn't getting I was focusing on what I was getting. That $7,000 was extremely helpful to our household. Um, in addition to that, I was having fun. Um, I was loved being home with my kids, loved getting away from them as a young mom with young kids. Um, I started to get recognized at monthly meetings, and that was exciting because my husband never walked in and said, wow, honey, the toilets look great. So just being able to get that recognition alongside having fun, the excitement kept me propelling forward. And that kept my income growing. And so although I made 7000 my first year, my business continued to grow. And by my seventh year, I was making six figures. And that was really exciting because I was making a corporate income while driving my kids to and from school. I was working um, in the classroom. I was going on the field trips and my income was on the tail of my husband's who happened to say that whoever made the most money was the boss. So thinking of surpassing his income was very exciting. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I was earning trips, enjoying tax write-offs. There's over 300 tax write-offs in a, um, home-based business. So that's exciting. And you start building not only a network of friends, but truly a network of, um, a family. I'll tell you, Belinda, um, when my dad passed away, more people showed up to his funeral from direct sales than a church I'd belonged to for 15 years. And so it was amazing. Um, and what I tell you guys is that I'm not the only one doing this. There's so many people that are changing their life and implementing direct sales and um, able to grow their business, doing way better than I did, way faster. Um, But it all boils down to being grateful for where you're at, being grateful for that $7,000. Because we all start off making that small amount of income, but we all have the potential to make a large amount of income. But again, stay focused on what you're 
getting instead of what you're not getting. Um, so after about 11 years in that first company, I switched to a new party plan. I had several good years there, but it still didn't feel like I found my home. I kept looking. I um, recommend if you're looking for a home in direct sales, you look for things like leadership, products, and a culture that aligns with your core values and your passion. Don't try to sell a product you aren't passionate about. That doesn't work. Even if you have the opportunity to make a lot of money, you're going to make money when you're excited, when you're excited about and sincerely passionate. That's going to give you the courage you need. Um, then finally, this is the last step, Belinda. Four years ago, I found an MLM company, which I'm currently enjoying. And as you said, it's Nerium International. It's a tad bit different than Party Plan. Party Plan is mostly stay-at-home moms, very few men, mostly a younger age group. Group, mostly people looking to pay for pizza, movies, maybe a car payment. Multi-level marketing seems to be more of a mix of men and women. A lot of couples do it together. People are looking for more like 3000 a month instead of the $300 to help them make a car payment or something like that. Multi-level marketing tends to be more of a global business than a party plan does. I believe both can make you money, bring you blessings and a life changer, but they are a little bit different. And I know, Belinda, um, you wrote a wonderful book called Direct Sales for Dummies. Um, what did, and I know in that book, you compared the differences. So was there anything that I missed that you could add to that? Well, I would say that the industry is ever changing and we're seeing more of a, a hybrid that is starting to evolve where the party plan is taking some of the MLM strategies and the MLM companies are taking some of the really good, strong foundational work from the party plan companies and making this into this sort of hybrid of what is direct sales today. And I also know that more and more people, so you said it's primarily stay-at-home moms, the, the, the data doesn't really support that, um, mm -hmm. although it does help stay-at-home moms, but 94% of people who do even a party plan business work it alongside another job. So we've got a lot of people that are just seeing this way of life as being a game changer for, for wherever they are. And now with online marketing and social media, there are so many multiple ways to do your business, and, and we're seeing this in both Party Plan and in MLM. And so we really are focusing more these days and really have been teaching that it's multiple ways to work your business. And I think that that's what both of those um, entities, the network marketing and the party plan, because really both of those are multi-level marketing, if you will. Um, but that's what they're experiencing and seeing is that there is multiple ways to do your business. And it's really about the person and finding the right fit or the way they enjoy doing it the most, because there's just so much opportunity for individuals. So that was our research. And um, it really makes it an exciting time in the industry for everyone. Um, and lots of companies are, as I said, borrowing from each other to really create a very dynamic opportunity for almost anyone of all walks of life. Exactly, exactly. And Warren Buffett, who obviously is an extremely um, respected businessman, highly recommends direct sales. So that that's kind of interesting, too. Oh, He's absolutely. Made He's made money a lot of different ways, and this is the one he says is his favorite. So I think that's interesting. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about, you know, this show is called Work From Your Happy Place, and we really wanted to focus more on, um, you know, what is the, how has the business shaped your lifestyle? Um, so could you share with us just a little bit about how your lifestyle has been really affected by um, the business? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I will talk about my lifestyle. I think it shaped me both personally and professionally, but I think it really shaped my soul. And I'll talk about that in a little bit too, but it really gave me a sense of accomplishment and confidence, which has contributed to joy and peace in my soul. When you have joy and peace um, inside, your happiness barometer goes up and life around you begins to change. Um, you view things different, your opportunities for growth, otherwise known as struggles. Um, you can view those in a more positive manner when you feel good about yourself and what you're doing. You tend to have more grace and love for other people around you. Honestly, it's really made me happier and it made me, it's made me better both personally and professionally. 
financially, it's given us the lifestyle to give our boys financial opportunities we may not have otherwise. Um, my husband makes a good living. Of course, we would have shoes, clothes, roof over our head, food, all that kind of stuff. They, of course, would be there regardless whether we had two incomes. But it has allowed us to say yes, where we may have otherwise said no. Um, something that's exciting, Belinda, you you mentioned my son that's at UC San Diego. Um, before he the summer after college, he was a he got a chance to go to a UC Berkeley, um, a computer engineering class, and it was twenty three hundred dollars, which is a lot of money. We probably would have chosen not to have him attend that if we wouldn't have had two incomes, but we were able to allow him to attend that. And the blessing is that he re, it, he returned home. It landed him an intern job at Intel. He is on his fourth summer at Intel. They have intent to hire him when he graduates from college. And so it not only changed, you know, our lifestyle as far as stuff. And of course, we do have more stuff, but stuff I don't believe is life changing. But it allowed us to open doors and opportunities and give those experiences to our children, which in turn has changed their life. Um, Direct sales allows us to have, of course, we had money to pay for the soccer lessons and the flexibility to attend the lessons. So when you can combine those, it's incredible. Um, it doesn't mean we don't work. We do work um, in direct sales. We just get that flexibility. I remember being a young mom and being able to call my hostesses and say, hey, um, this is Marcella, Belinda. I would love to catch up with you about your show. Um, I'm putting my kids to bed and feeding them dinner right now. How late can I call you? And I would get that person's permission to call them. And most of the time, they actually said, you can call me up till 11. And so I would be able to just focus on my kids, feed them, bathe them, read them stories, put them to bed. And then at nine, I'd be able to get on the phone and call that person and say, hey, Belinda, you said it was okay to call you up till 11. My kids are in bed. Is this still a good time? And um, that's the flexibility we're talking about. So we definitely work everything's fun. Belinda, you are all about fun. (laughs) When we get you on stage and you're talking about things like goals and the power hour and everything, you don't deliver anything without a lot of fun. And I think that, um, there is a lot of fun in this industry. Um, and it's given our family the opportunity to travel the world. And much of the time it's paid for by the companies that we're with. Um, I would say the biggest drawback is that my boys think that a four-star hotel is normal. (laughs) And I say that sincerely because the companies are going to be sending you to magnificent places and they're going to be sending it to you in style. Yes, I've had that issue with, uh, (laughs) I I remember my son one time we we went to another hotel and he he looked at me, he goes, do they know who you are? I said, right here, honey, I'm really not anybody. (laughs) I'm not anybody today. (laughs) But it is funny how they do get used to that. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So share with us, because this is the one piece, it's kind of the little training piece to this that everybody wants to say, okay, well, how did she do it? So tell us just about some of your greatest skill sets that you think that have contributed to your overall success. Okay. <laughs> First of all, I have to say I'm extremely average at everything. Um, one of the things that I do consider myself passionate about is loving people and caring for people. Um, so if you're a customer of mine, I'm going to help you make decisions based on your best interest. If you're someone in my downline, when we t- are talking and I'm coaching you, it's going to be in regards to what you tell me your goals are. Um, I've been building a business while focusing on others' needs. I think I'm, I've am i learned to do that. I think I'm good at that. And I think that that is really, really important. What I have learned along the way is um, loving people means not always letting them get away with what they want to get away with. <laughs> it means you know, having those hard conversations too and telling them, um, you know, I know that you say that you want to make this a go, but you're really not making time to attend the meeting. So how can we change that? And I realize that if I love people, it's having those conversations too and and being real with them. Um, We all know how to lose weight. Like it's in every, it's on the internet. There's a million books written by it. Um, Everybody knows 
you know, eat less, exercise more. But it really sometimes takes a coach to be there to tell you, you know, to put down the chocolate cake or do that. And so I learned that although my strength, I believe, is loving people, I also felt that that was my weakness, that I had to learn to love them enough to to help them through their struggles and their weaknesses. Um, so again, I, I really think I'm pretty average at everything. The one thing I do have a large amount of is courage. Um, I think I'm naive to other people's opinions. In other words, I don't spend a lot of time worrying if my I'm going to be calling somebody at the wrong time or if my call is going to bother them or, you know, if asking them to book a show is going to offend them or asking them to join my team is going to upset them. I just do all of those things that I have to do to build a business with the right intention and the right intention is their best interest. I don't get caught up on why someone might think this or that. Um, I don't let my mind go there. And I think that takes courage. So I think In direct sales, you do have to love people and you do have to have courage. Thank you for sharing that. So tell us about an obstacle or a challenge that you faced and how you work through it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) I have to laugh because we've been talking about getting this call together for about a month and a half. So I do have to say my definitely my biggest obstacle is time management and time commitment. Um, (laughs) <laughs> um, you and your team have experienced, you know, how hard it is to peg me down. And I absolutely love hanging out with you and spending time with you, Belinda. You're one of my favorite people. But committing that time is is a struggle for me. Um, but what I have learned is we can't make a significant income without having some type of schedules and order to our activities. Um, also, people feel valid they feel valued in business if you give them your time. Um, If you're laxy-daisy with your time, they're not feeling like they're very important to you. So I had to learn that. So although I say it's a challenge and an obstacle, it doesn't mean I get to skip it um, because I won't grow a business. It just means I have to work harder at it because it doesn't become natural. It doesn't come natural to me. Your power hour, Belinda, has been completely life-changing for not only me, but for my team. We've taught it at retreats. I've done um, training classes on it. We've done phone calls on it. And once people understand the power hour, they begin to really thrive in their business. And me as a young mom, one of the things without having that time schedule and that time commitment, what I was doing was I was playing Legos with the boys on the ground and I was feeling guilty about not working. And then I'd be working and my mind would be focused on the boys, you know, oh, I wish I was playing Legos with them on the ground. And I just wasn't happy or content anywhere. And with that power hour, you go in your office, you shut the door, you tell your family, I'm going to be done in an hour. I'm going to make calls for an hour. Then you come out in an hour. You want them to trust what you're saying. So you come out in the hour and then you focus on them. You've done your work. So that that power hour has been amazing for me and, and plugging it into the different um you know, 15 minutes for your hostesses, 15 minutes for your team, that kind of thing. Um, Organizing your hour has been really amazing for my (laughs) (laughs) time management, you know, obstacles for sure. Um, Did you have anything to add to that before I'll go on to a couple other faults I have? (laughs) Do you know what? I... It's not usually an issue for me. And this is what I think some people think, oh, well, I don't have an issue with that or... um, But like for me, I'll tell you what I did today because I found myself um, being slightly overwhelmed with like adding this is new. I'm trying to get this podcast show going and and it's taking a certain amount of time. And then we've got our, our new Direct Selling Now platform, which is new. And so suddenly I found myself being incredibly overwhelmed and I'm like, okay, that's it. So instead of having notebooks and pieces of paper and notes all over my house, I just decided yesterday morning, okay, you know, and the podcast already had its own folder, but I also had some notebooks with notes and I had other pieces. So I'm like, okay, everything's going in this purple folder for podcast. (laughs) Okay, so now I've got, you know, bookings is going back in here. And I just completely resituated myself with that power hour. So you know, you don't grow out of it. It's something that you always go back to and it really does help you to compartmentalize and focus. And 
I loved what you said about not feeling guilty because every single person deals with that, especially moms, if you're trying to manage a family. And then even later on, Um, I find the same thing when you have parents that are a little bit older now that you're suddenly becoming their caretaker, and it's the exact same feeling. So I'm dealing with a lot of my friends that are having those feelings. And I know even when my mom had her stroke, one of the things that I had to talk to her doctors and I had to follow up. So I created a power hour folder for that. And so I made sure that I gave my time to that that was necessary to do. But then when I wasn't doing it, I didn't have to feel guilty that I should be back doing that. Um, And I just think that that is really important for people to learn to compartmentalize And I don't think a lot of people fully grasp that. So that was a big, huge point that you made that I just kind of wanted to um, highlight because every single person, no matter where they are in their walk of life or age or where their kids are or what's going on, um, we all deal with different obstacles, struggles, challenges, and you've got to learn as best you can to compartmentalize those things, give them the time they need, but then when you need to give something else your time, be fully invested in what you're working on in that moment. I agree. I agree. And as I was listening to you, I was thinking like, what if we could get rid of that guilt? What if we could get rid of our mind, you know, shifting to what we're not doing instead of what we are doing? All of a sudden we become happier, right? You really do. (laughs) It is a happiness is a big, huge you know, thing right now that everybody is like they they want. And um, we've got a great free gift for all the listeners out there that go to our site. And it's an audio that I did on what does it mean to be happy. And it's taken a lot of the data from a lot of the research that has been done recently about what, what does it really mean to be happy. And um, it's really interesting on what some of those things are. So for anybody that's listening, your first time, you can go to work from your happy place and click and get that free download. And it's a fun, really great, interesting piece. So I would encourage people to do that. Any other challenges that you'd like to share with us? I know that this is a big learning tool for a lot of people because usually everybody out there can relate to it in one way, shape, or form. So is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today, Marcella? There's a couple other things. Um, One of the things for me personally is naturally I'm not, (laughs) I hate to say it because it's so important, but I'm really not a good listener. And I don't mean to be, and I don't, want to be a bad listener, but it just doesn't always come natural to me. Um, I want to be a good listener and I try to be a good listener, but you know, sometimes it's just more fun to talk. (laughs) Um, And it's sad, but true. But I really feel I've learned to listen to people. You can't become better at this business. You can't become a stronger recruiter if you aren't listening. For instance, 23 years ago, if you were talking to me about being home with my kids and earning money, I was listening. Now my boys, my son's in high school and my other two boys are in college. Nobody even notices when I'm home. So I wouldn't listen to you if you started talking about how I could be home with my kids. But if you listened to me and you got to know where I was at in life, you would know that my kids need my money. So if you started talking to me about how I could earn money, then I'd be listening. So with that, I know when I, when I meet someone that what I have to offer, I have flexible hours. I have unlearning opportunities. I have free trips, tax advantages, a night out, so much to offer somebody, but I don't know which is going to fit into their life. And I don't want to try to sell them something they're not looking for. So I ask questions and I listen. The awesome part is being a good listener not only has improved my business, but it really makes us a better friend, partner, parent, and a better person as a whole. Um, (laughs) What about you, Belinda? How do you feel on your listening real quick? And then I I do have one other thing that I want to share. I think I've always been a pretty good listener. I think that my downside or downfall in listening is that um, I am so busy and my brain works at about 100 miles an hour constantly that I'm always thinking about the next thing that I need to get to or go to. And so for me, I need to just continually be present, be present, 
Um, and that's something I trained myself on for years. And I think one of the things I'm thankful for right now is I really, I'm not going to say I don't do it at all, but it is not an issue for me. I am not attached to my phone at my hip and in my ever being. And I don't, if I'm in a conversation with you and I see my phone dings, I wouldn't even know that it dings because I don't have it on to ding. I don't constantly glance at it to see if anybody might have phoned. I And I see this all the time now. I find it so completely and utterly rude, but you know, it's people are not present and we need to be present for people. And that's my biggest beef right now. Like when we go to dinner, even with my adult children and everybody's at the dinner table now and I have an 11 year old too. And my husband is uh, guilty of it as well. And I start seeing everybody sitting there looking at their phones. I'm like, okay, all the phones in the middle of the table. And everybody has to put their phones in the center of the table. And they all have to do it because I'm usually paying. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, if you want dinner tonight, your phone goes in the center of the table. But it's teaching people how to be present. That's how you become a good listener. And, you know, mine used to be just of my mind racing. And I learned to not do that so much anymore. But now I think with most people out there, for goodness sakes, you know, you can be uh, separated from your phone for 30 minutes or for an hour to spend good quality time with people you care about. And exactly. I, and I see it in recruiting all the time. I see people sitting having a meeting with somebody and the person's really telling them their why or what this means to them. And they're glancing down at their phone and saying, oh, excuse me, just one minute. You don't care. You're right. s- saying loud and clear I, what you're telling me about how this could affect you, mm, not so much important to me. So I just would really love people to think about that a little bit more. That's a good point. That's a good point. And the whole time you were talking, I definitely was listening, but I was also thinking about Olivia, because I know you have two generations of kids. You have your older generation and you have your um, younger generation and, and how much you must have learned to really be present for Olivia. And I love seeing you go to her programs and stuff on Facebook. So thank you for sharing that with us. Oh the my world. gosh. She's yeah, amazing. Fun. I just, she, I, um, I'm so thankful for her every single day that I yeah. made that decision to have my children 20 years apart. <laughs> yeah. And you're not missing anything. So that's awesome. It is awesome. Great. But Belinda, I do want to say one last thing that I think is really important. And I really want everyone to listen up because I think this is the biggest obstacle for all people in direct sales. And that is to really understand that people will tell you that you can't do this. Um, and there are so many people unfortunately, that are misinformed and look down on the industry. And our challenge being in the industry is not to listen to them, not to believe them, because you will get people that most people that will tell you you can't do this. And you'll get a few people telling you you can. I strongly suggest you focus on and you listen to those people that tell you you can, because of course you can. More women in direct sales than any other profession is making six figures than it, you know, you have to build so much internal strength that you aren't relying on the opinions of others or the thoughts of others to propel you forward. You have to develop strength and confidence, and that's going to come from personal growth. The good news is when you do this, it's going to create strengths in so many other areas of your life. And I'll, I'll tell you a quick story is, um, one time I, it was a Friday and my housekeeper comes on Friday and I had a headache and I was in bed extra longer. I was in bed longer that morning and um, I got up at 11 and um, one of my downline had called me and they they were telling me that somebody had told them that, you know, this business isn't really a business and all this kind of stuff. And it was just interesting to me because people will throw those daggers at you. And I was just thinking to myself, OK. It's 11 a.m. on Friday. I just woke up. I did have to get up at 9 a.m. to unlock the door to let the housekeeper in. And they just deposited $11,000 in my bank account. I would say this is a pretty good business. But most people don't see those things. They, they, so what you have to do is just forgive them for they know not better and just let them go and not get wrapped up in their drama. I, I agree. And one of the really cool things that's happened since I wrote the book 
and that is I've got random people. I mean, literally stopping me at the grocery store, sending me emails, and it just goes to show you that people don't understand necessarily the industry. So that's what I think everybody needs to really be clear on is I've had people just come up to me and say, I would have never, ever considered doing anything like this ever. And then I read your book and I was like, oh my gosh, now I just want to know what's the right company for me. Do you have recommendations? And, or how do I choose? Or what do I find the companies at? And I, it's not happened once, twice. It's happened multiple times. And so I think that when people get a better understanding of it, then their attitude clearly changes about it. So that's been a really cool thing that I've observed just since the book came out. Absolutely. Good, 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 good. Great. So tell us, what does working from your happy place mean to you? (laughs) This is always fun. Um, This has definitely evolved for me. When I was a young mom, um, I think I was out just to prove I could do it. If I proved it to myself and the world, then I thought, okay, then I'll be happy. If I just made enough money, brought the right house, et cetera, then I would be happy. If I could prove to people that I was worthy and then they approved of me, then I would be happy. So I kind of spent the first years chasing that approval to find my own happiness. What you find that happiness is a stepping stone to the next happiness. Um, In my quest to find happiness, and as I said earlier in my journey to finding that inner strength to realize exactly what Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz told us, um, you had the power the whole time. Um, I guess what I would say, Belinda, is I had the power the whole time and I didn't know it. But it's truly a journey. You don't just decide to be more confident. You don't just decide not to let other people's opinions affect you. You work on that. Then someone comes along and they may say something like direct sales isn't a real job. And you pull back and you might get in a funk. And then you regain courage and you go back to the world. And then someone else says you'll never make money doing this. And you pull back. and But your funk gets a little bit shorter until eventually someone can say something short-sighted like that, naive like that. And you don't even say a word because you just understand they don't understand yet. And when you can find that internal happiness, that internal peace, you're definitely going to have internal happiness. So I think right now going on that journey, trying to find my own self-worth, trying to find my approval of others, I think right now um, I'm one step ahead of that. So now my job is to empower, empower others to discover that they too already have the power, partnering beside them on their journey. If I can get them to believe that it can be done and they can be the ones to do it with me, the good news is we both win. I think early on in my career, I thought I was chasing money, trips, titles, but what I was really chasing was just peace inside my soul. And um, I found it. So, uh, and it didn't take it, it, it wasn't easy. It took a lot of work. So I think currently my happy place is empowering others to change and discover their own soul, um, to help them discover that they had the power the whole time. Oh, that was really, um, very well put. Thank you for sharing that with us. So what advice do you have for people that want to start their own business, um, would like to start in direct selling, um, they would just like to have a career doing something on their own and that entrepreneurial spirit, if you will. So what advice would you give to others? Well, I guess I would say don't just do it. Just dive in and do it. There's a million reasons why it won't work and there's a million and one why it will work. So choose to focus on all the reasons it'll work there. Again, I I've said it a lot in our time today, but I said, Pete, there's going to be people that tell you you can't. And there's going to be people that tell you you can, you have the power to decide who you're going to listen to. And so my advice for somebody that wants to jump in to something like that is just to do it to find a company that the leadership aligns with you, that the product aligns with you, that the core values align with you, that the integrity aligns with you. Definitely find out that all of those things are exactly where you're at and partner with that company and go for it. 
Awesome. So in closing, what are some new and exciting things that maybe you've been working on or doing and that you think our listeners would benefit from? Well, I'm constantly changing my resources of energy and motivation throughout the years. Um, actually, Belinda, you you and your team have stepped into success, have been a constant. Um, we're enjoying your latest direct selling now. Um, so we appreciate everything you do to bring breathe life into all of us direct sellers. So I have to say thank you and kudos to you and your team. Um, but some of the other things that I've been doing is... Um, there's an app and it's called the five minute journal. And in the morning you wake up and it says, um, and it asks you to say, what are you looking forward to about the day? And at the end, it asks you to journal what you're grateful for. And this definitely your, your brain begins to change. You cannot write down what you're grateful for, what you're looking forward to every single day without your brain changing a little bit. So that five minute journal app has been huge for me. Um, TED Talks, if you're not familiar with TED Talks, I recommend you Google them and find out more about them. There's so many incredible TED Talks out there. Um, Meditation, if you go to YouTube and you type in finding your happy place, there's going to be all kinds of meditations in there that are going to help you You know, as you're working out, as you're doing your yoga, if you put on these meditations, as you're waking up in the morning, as you're going to sleep, these also will help change your brain to get you into a really happy place. And then the last thing I'll um, leave you with is there's a book out that I've um, been working on with my team. It's called The Miracle Morning. And they talk about giving yourself one hour in the morning, one hour of, they call them savers, silence. And in this hour, you're going to give yourself a little bit of silence. You're going to do some affirmations. You're going to do some visualizations, exercise. You're going to do some reading and you're going to do some scribing. And you'll be amazed at like just reading 10 pages of a good book a day, Um, stretching your body and visualizing what your day is going to look like, reminding yourself of all your strengths and your affirmations spending time just being still and being silent. Um, These things have been really life changing for me as well. Well, it has been an absolute joy and a pleasure. You've been one of my favorite people over the course of the 20 years that I've known you. And so it is exciting to have you in one of our first shows. So thank you so much. And uh, I value our friendship so much. It's why I put up with your procrastination. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you. (laughs) And I know that our listeners today really walked away with some really gold nuggets. So thank you again, Marcella. Thank you, Belinda. Thanks for joining us at Work From Your Happy Place. If you like what you hear, please share it with your friends. And be sure to rate and review us on iTunes or Stitcher. For a free gift on finding your own happy place, please visit workfromyourhappyplace.com and click on the free audio button. Thanks again for listening.